Hi everybody, in this video, we're gonna look at something that a lot of you have kept searching for on group.com to see what the solution might be. And that is how do you swap items in an array? So I've already written an article, and so here is the video form, the same thing, in case watching me talk and explain things visually and verbally is more of something that you typically enjoy. So let's get started. So despite how awesome arrays are, we know they come up with a lot of methods, a lot of properties, a lot of capabilities, there's still a lot of things they don't really provide out of the box. You know, they're very important in the whole ecosystem of how you do things in JavaScript, but that importance oftentimes doesn't come with the conveniences you might expect when something needs to be done that is very common. Something very common like, for example, swapping two items in an array. So what I'm gonna do is first walk through how we might think about swapping items in an array, looking at some of the technical details of how we might implement it, and then we'll jump into the code, which if I do a good job explaining what we're trying to do, the code will be pretty straightforward and easy to follow. So to start with, let's start with an array. Here we have an array. It's made of letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And what we want to do to kind of set this example up is pick two values and swap them, which is exactly the overarching problem we're trying to solve here. And so I put the array index positions below the array item. So you can now see that A through H is also now represented numerically via zero through seven. And the letters we want to swap are the items we want to swap or the letters C and F or to be more appropriately speaking in terms of JavaScript, the items in array position two and array position five. And so the way we're gonna do that is by taking advantage of a temporary variable. There's no easy way for us to do a swap without really having another mechanism where we store the value temporarily as part of making this work. So here I have a variable called temp and I'm setting it to the value of the array item, in this case, letter C, which is at position two. And so once I have the temp value stored, there's one thing I can do here. Now I'm taking the value, which is F, the destination in this case, and I'm setting it back to the value of C, where it was originally. So before we had C, now it's a temp value, and I'm overriding it with the value we want to ultimately copy into it. And so at this brief moment in time, the value F is gonna be duplicated twice. It's gonna be both where it was originally, and now it's gonna be replicated where the C was earlier. But now, because I have the C value stored in a temporary variable, I can just swap it in place. I can just say that, okay, now that F is in the new location, I can take a temporary C and then move it to where F was originally, which in the end results in our array having the F and C values, or the items in position two, and position five swapped, which is exactly what we are trying to do. And so taking all of this and putting into code, there's one approach is it, which is a one-off approach. If we had to just specifically focus on just swapping the letters in the position two and position five, we can do it in this format. So we have our array called my data. We have the temp variable that is storing the value of uh, in position two, which will be C. And then I'm setting the value of my data bracket two to equal my data bracket five, which is setting the value of F equal to what was originally in C. And then lastly, swapping the value of F to our temporary value that we're storing. And then if we were to print this all out, you will now see A, B, F, D, E, C, G, where F and C are swapped, appearing appropriately. So if our goal was really just to tackle that very narrow scenario, we're golden, we got it, good to go. But it's more likely that you want something reusable, something that's more generic for all kinds of arrays where you're trying to swap a variety of items at various positions. And to make that easier, I create a function called swap. In this swap function, there are three arguments that are being taken, the array and the positions of the first item and the second item, the items you're really trying to swap. And then the rest of it is really just a, a walkthrough of what we looked at earlier, where we create a temp variable that stores the position or the value of the item we're trying to swap, the, f the first item. And then we set the first item's value to be that of the item we're swapping with. And then we then set the swapped item that we just removed to the value of the temp value. So we're just creating a swap very easily. So you can now see that if I were to pass in this call the swap function, pass in the array, my data, and then pass in the two index positions, in this case, two and five, which correspond to C and F, the end result is we now have A, B, F, D, E, C, G, exactly the way we wanted to where F and C are now in their swapped 
positions. Now, we can go a little bit more deeper. The swap function, but you know, we talked about earlier, takes three arguments, the array and the two array positions. So don't wanna harp on this too much. But typically though, you may not want to have the swap function be something you copy and paste over and over again. So we can always look at extending the array. We can always extend the array object by using the extending the prototype, using swap. And the logic here is almost identical to what we saw before, but the difference is how we actually call it. So now you can see that instead of having the swap function be the primary you know, input, and then I specify the array and the two index positions, swap is a natural part of the array itself. So we have my data is our array object, and I can now call swap directly on my data as shown here, and then just pass in the two index positions, and the end result is that our array has now been completely modified with the two values that have been, that we swapped, swapped appropriately. And lastly, I know in extending an array using array prototype, it works, it's great, it's more of a traditional way of doing things. Nowadays, you actually have a way of being able to extend the array by using the class-based syntax. And here's a version where I'm creating my array called awesome array, where, which extends array, and then I have swap be something we provide as a part of it. And you can now see here the way I'm using it is that I'm creating my new array by new awesome array, passing in the index of all the of the items we want to put in there, and then we're going to swap on it. In this case, I'm not swapping C and F, just to spice things up a bit, as, as spicy as we can make index positions in an array. I am swapping the first and second letters, or second items, in which case B and A are currently appearing. So we have other videos and articles that cover how extending an object in JavaScript, extending arrays. So we can talk more about that there, but you have several approaches for being able to make this work. But the really important part is swapping is really something you can do very straightforwardly by just specifying a temporary variable, storing one of the items you want to swap. I've been using the first item in all of the examples, but nothing prevents you from saying I want my temporary value to be the second item in my two items that I'm trying to swap. And then make sure that when you do the swap, the, the appropriate item is duplicated you know, in the new location. And then the swapped item replaces the, the original position item that was there before. So that way you have the swap, whether you're doing the first approach where item one is the temporary variable or item two is a temporary variable, doesn't matter. As long as you stay, keep things consistent, you'll be in good shape. And so with that, if you have any questions, post in the forums at formatgroup.com where we have probably some of the world's foremost experts in swapping items in an array who will be able to help you out with either this particular problem or any host of web development questions you might have. So I'll encourage you to go post there. If you like this video, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of new videos that I'll be making in a similar vein as other topics you've seen so far. Follow me at group on Twitter and Facebook and all the other places to be get, you know, to get a bite-sized version of some of the things that I find interesting that are usually web development related. And lastly, if you like watching this video, if you like reading content on the web, you may like reading content in a physical paperback edition. The content you've seen here is in my new book, Arrays from Noob to Ninja, where you can read it in a paperback form or in a Kindle edition or any other form that you might find uh, you know, interesting and appropriate. And with that, I will see you all next time.